In this episode, I machined the follower holder and the bearing block for the mini flame eater engine project, but I'm out of materials to make the parts. Well, I ordered some materials and made a quick trip to the city to pick them up. This little bundle of joy, I mean, materials cost $106.72. The cost of brassing is rather high lately. I'll mark some of the prices on each piece so you get an idea what it costs. I created the engine model back in 2019 and due to Fusion 360 subscription expiring after a year, I had to model some of the parts again so that I could make drawings of each part. The parts I'll be working on this time around are the bearing block and the follower holder, both brass pieces. Here's a tip, if you are using Fusion 360 under the hobby license, it's a good idea to make the drawings at the same time of the model, you lose editing ability after a year. This is one of the mildest winters I have known here in Canada. In January it should be minus 30 Celsius or much colder. But it has been around zero Celsius for weeks. This makes it much easier to keep the garage warm. Let's start machining with the follower holder. This little part will hold the follower which rolls on the cam disc of the engine. Due to the boss on the right side of the part, I couldn't use a traditional center drill. In its place I used a DIY 1-8 spot drill.
As you can see, the part is very small in relation to the size of my hand. Small parts are tedious and so easy to mess up. To finish the one flange, I now set it up on the vise with a square to orient the part 90 degrees to mill the length to a final size. A quick layout of the chamfers and the two 45 degree setups allowed to finish the part. I did goof at one point, I accidentally placed too much pressure on the part when closing the jaw. I had to use a 1 8 end mill to true up the hole for the follower holder pin to locate. In order to know the exact diameter after milling the hole, I used a set of pin gauges. These are very accurately ground shafts. The gauges come in under and oversize. Mine are undersize of the nominal size and increment by 1000ths of an inch. Very handy when trying to measure small holes. Years ago I used them a lot when operating a wire EDM. Moving on to the bearing block. There are times when sawing off excess material makes more sense than milling it all away. In the case of brass being rather pricey, I tend to keep small pieces as they can be very handy for future projects. With a 1mm hole on the bearing block, it wasn't as easy to drill as I thought it would be. The drill flutes kept clogging with the brass. I finally switched to a high RPM and used more DW40 as a lube. I forgot to hit record on the camera and missed the shot, but the hole did drill through.
After milling the chamfers and light to bearing with the file, the last operations to perform on the bearing block are to spot drill and drill the 2mm holes. That is as far as I will take the parts for now. When I get to the mating stainless steel cylinder, the successful tapping of the mounting holes on the cylinder will ultimately dictate what size screws I end up implementing on my engine build. I may end up having to use imperial screws as they might be easier to source locally. That concludes this video. The other three parts shown will be in the next video so I can keep the videos around 15 minute durations. If you enjoyed the video please leave a comment below and be sure to like and subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.